Hello, this is Jeff from Baron Leathercraft, and today we're going to do a review on the Ortor Laser Master H10. Inside, you see that there is a sheet that shows you everything that comes in the box. These are material data sheets. They show you what they consider good settings to use on particular materials that you're using. Here is the instructions on how to put it together. I found that you didn't need it really. It was very simple. Plus they have an excellent video that you can use, which is so much more explanatory. But otherwise the, the uh, manual is fine. Here is the actual laser module. It is a 10 watt laser module that came with this one. They also have this with the 20 watt laser module. Here is your USB flash drive and your Wi-Fi antenna. This right here is your power cord, and this is your USB cable in order to connect it to your computer. Here are a pair of glasses, and this is the hose actually to connect an air assist. My particular package didn't come with an air assist, but it is ready to be set up. I already have some pumps, so I went ahead and used one I had already. This is the mount. You're going to use this to connect the module to the actual machine. And these are screws that you're going to need to put the machine together. Very simple build. Here are your tools and some material that they supplied you with so you can practice or just test out the machine. This is the power bar. It connects to the power cable and into the wall and into your laser engraver. This machine pretty much comes already built. All the belts are in. The gantry is already connected. Really, all you're doing is setting up the laser module and the cable. Here's the laser module. It's the LU210B. Here's your power inputs and your USB inputs. This is how I snaked the cable along the X-axis. Belt tensioner for the X-axis and the Y-axis. The machine has two stop sensors, one for the Y-axis and one for the X-axis. Here's your TF slot for your micro SD card. And over here is your recovery button and a reset button. The focal gauge board is nice and thick. That way, if you're doing leather, you have less opportunity for the leather to curl up and get caught up on the laser module. Focusing is easy. Just go ahead and put the focal gauge board underneath the laser module, loosen the screw, lower the module, tighten the screw, and then pull the board out of the way. That simple. Adding air assist is really simple. There's a hole waiting for it. Just push down and then put the tube in and then go ahead and let go. For me, engraving on slate is a lot of fun. They just come out really cool looking. Okay, this is the Wednesday Adams coaster. I did this at 9,000 millimeters a minute and 80% power and it took 14 minutes and 45 seconds to do. I thought it came out really nice. I used a DPI of 321. Let's see how far I can come up without it getting blurry. Nice detail. I was happy with the outcome. You don't see any banding, which is nice. Okay, this tiger dragon yin yang symbol I did on wood, and it is 4,000 millimeters a minute, 70% power. And this is a piece of art that I do on all of my laser engraving videos. That way, you could look at each video to see which one you like the best and compare it. This came out really nice. The, the burn was nice and dark. The cut was at 200 millimeters a minute and 90% power. And it took 16 minutes and 16 seconds to do. And it is almost 3 millimeters thick. And it cut it very easily. There's not a lot of burn along the cut. So when I cut, this particular machine didn't come with air assist. But I have one. So I went ahead and turned it on. The reason I like doing a design like this is the amount of detail that is involved in these animals if you look at the scales on the dragon and the face of the tiger so this uh, 10 
wad laser is really able to engrave well, in my opinion, on wood. As far as cutting wood, I thought it did a fine job. For three millimeter wood, I found that 500 millimeters at 90% power was adequate and was able to cut it easily. I did this at 6,000 millimeters a minute and 80% power, and the DPI was 357. It's cute. Everything here is shrunken down, obviously, so it seemed to have maintained its integrity. I did both sides. See if I can get closer. Very cool. I thought this laser did a good job when it came to cutting acrylic. It was a very clean cut. So we're looking at about three millimeters. The fastest I went was 300 millimeters a minute and 90% power. And the slowest was 150, 200, and 300. Acrylic is normally cut pretty slow. So I'm going to say that this 10 watt laser did a good job cutting the acrylic. Alrighty, here's the same design done on leather which I do on my other videos if you want to compare them. It came out nice. I like the darkness of the burn and the contrast of the leather. This one I did at 15,000 millimeters a minute, which is pretty quick, which is nice. And I did it at 80% power. And it took 6 minutes and 5 seconds. And the cut I did at 200 millimeters a minute and 90% power. And the thickness of this leather is, it's about 8 ounces. This is 8 ounce leather. I found that anything, th anything about 8 ounce and up with this machine, I had to go to 200 millimeters a minute. The engraving on this laser is excellent. I also do this design quite a bit when I do my laser reviews because it has very detailed lines. And once again, this laser did an excellent job of engraving. I did this one at 15,000 millimeters a minute and 80% power. And I also did the cut at 200 millimeters a minute at 90% power, which as long as I stayed at the 200 millimeter range, it seemed to be fine. It's actually a clean cut. I have to cut out a piece of leather for one of the purses I'm making, so I figured I'd do that while I have this laser set up. This is the purse I was talking about. I've been converting some of my patterns over to be able to cut them out with the laser. The leather cut out fine at 200 millimeters a minute and 90% power. The edges are fine, they're not charred, and I was happy with the outcome. This is the outcome of the first aluminum card that I engraved. I did it at 6,000 millimeters a minute and 30% power. And then the other side I did at 6,000 6, millimeters a minute and 50% power. And I didn't see any difference. It didn't bend or warp in any way. And I'm 99% sure that these are coated. From what I understand, if they were anodized, you wouldn't see this sliver of silver, in the, which is the aluminum on the side. So these came out fine. All right, I wanted to see how a black card and a photograph would do. So this is 6,000 millimeters a minute and 40% power.
In conclusion, I like this machine for its engraving capability. I thought it engraved very well. As far as cutting is concerned, this laser came with the laser module LA3-10B. I had to bring the laser down to 200 millimeters a minute at 90% power when it came to cutting thicker leathers, like 8 ounce or more. I also own the Eurofero Laser 2, which is also created by Orter. That particular laser came with the laser module LU2-10A. That particular laser module comes with what they call COS, or their laser compression technology. With that particular laser, I was able to cut 8 ounce leather at 300 millimeters a minute and 90% power. Last I checked, Arto does offer options as far as laser modules are concerned. And of course, they also have a 20 watt laser, and they have one with COS technology. The workspace was 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters. The entire frame is made out of aluminum, and it's not very heavy. For that reason, it's easy to pack up whenever you're done using it. I hope this information was helpful if you're looking for a new laser. I much appreciate you watching this video, and if you feel like liking and subscribing, that would be great. Until then, take care and be good to each other.